glad that uh, you're listening to our program and we hope that you're a regular visitor to our website. We hope to have things for you that would be interesting, educational, uplifting, encouraging. Go with me to Psalm 119, the longest chapter in the Bible. And let's talk about the word, word. We're looking at the Bible and talking about it today. This word, it's kind of hard to say it this way, this word, word, is used 38 times in the book of Psalms, 37 of those times in this one chapter, 119. And you've probably heard these words before, starting in verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord. Accept, I pray, the free will offering of my mouth, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in danger, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me. This is David speaking. And your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever. I have not strayed from your precepts, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. Now it wasn't all that long ago that a young man said, you know, I'm not sure I believe in God anymore. I became a Christian when I was a kid. My parents pressured me to do it. I, I'm not sure I really believe in God. I think I got all messed up when I read about how God's always there forever and ever and nothing created him. And then at school we were taught the opposite, that everything evolved to be the way it is today. Now I've read my Bible, I've prayed to God, but I just don't believe that he exists. I don't believe in evolution either, really. I just try not to think about it. But it still bothers me that someday I may have an accident or something and die and go to the hell that's talked about in the Bible because I don't believe in God. I'm just messed up. My parents don't know about my problem and I know you'll probably say, oh, trust your parents. If they really love you, they'll understand. Well, you don't know my parents. They won't understand. I know they won't. And if you think I'm hopeless, then forget that I ever brought this up. Well, he definitely is not hopeless. And the very fact that he's thinking about these things constantly and that he has an open heart are, I think, proof of that. When you really get down to it, his experience is very similar to what many people in the Bible experienced. They too had highs and lows in their walk with God. Sometimes the lows were very low. We just read about David. And sometimes his lows were low. So if you're having the same uneasiness in your spiritual life that this young man has had, then my first statement to you is don't despair because you're asking uh, tough questions. The fact that you're interested in these things is proof that uh, you care about spiritual matters and that you're on the right track. But where is that final path leading? See, some who question their faith ultimately reject God, and that path leads to destruction. So it's important that you raise questions. You continue to look for answers because those who seek, the Bible says, will find. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The only place to look for those answers is in the word of God. Go back to what the young man said about uh, his parents and not understanding him. I think it's important for him to talk these things out with his parents. And if you can't go to those who love you most, who can you go to? Now, are parents always right? Uh, my parents weren't always right. Yours weren't either. No two sets of parents are alike. And I know that some are very hard to talk to and sometimes impossible to talk to. 
But whether it's your parents or a preacher or a counselor or a friend or somebody else to talk to, always be sure to compare what they tell you with what you read in God's Word. Don't ever stop opening God's Word and looking to this resource, going to it for your answers to life. It won't fail you. Now, is it all easy to understand? No. But the most important issues in life are there, and they're understandable. In the Bible, you'll find comfort, assurance, and your faith will grow. And you'll always find many examples of others, some great examples of faith, who have asked the same questions this young man is asking, and maybe that you're asking uh, when you experience low points in your walk with God. But the bottom line is this, if you will trust in God, study and obey His Word, He'll never fail you. And the anxiety uh, of your going to hell someday will be replaced with your anticipation of a wonderful place called heaven, prepared for those who do trust God, who study and obey His Word and live faithfully. Thank you again for visiting with us today, and I hope you come back often. May God bless and keep you. Amen.